Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're checking out the right proper raised by wolves. So the Raised by Wolves is a dry hopped pale ale and the uh, can is pretty pretty crazy. It's got like all kinds of little florally leaves and I don't know what these are. What do you think those are? Flowers? Hops. Doesn't really say much other than 5% alcohol and dry hopped pale ale. So my guess is this is an American pale ale. The difference between the um, American pale ales and English pale ales is basically, well, there's a lot of stuff. They use cleaner yeast and they use, you know, lots of Cascade hops, American grown hops. Um, so it's, uh, it's definitely a little bit different. They also use two row uh, malts, typically anyway. And really the addition of the hops is what kind of gives it that differentiation between an American pale ale and English pale ale. Yeah, they, they uh, add them pretty late in the boil, right? Yes. The typical color too, medium golden, blonde. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit on the dark side. I like it. There's not too much differentiating these between uh, amber ales, to be honest. Right. Yeah, I mean, it uh, smells like hops. That's that's. Oh, you like get, beer. Yeah, it smells like beer. I'm getting some citrusy notes, which is also another um, characteristic of the pale ale. Yeah, it can be piney or florally. In this case, uh, I'm getting more piney kind of character to it. I mean, on the nose, I'm just getting citrus, but we'll, we'll find mm. out. To each their own nose, I suppose. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Balanced, I will say that. It definitely has that cleanliness thing happening. It cleans up really almost like instantly. Yeah. It leaves a little bit of bitterness on the back note, but it doesn't linger around too much. It's also crisp. Yeah. Which is another it's characteristic crisp. of the pale ale. It's light, it's crisp. It's, uh, yeah, crisp is a good description. Yeah, it's, uh, I would say this is approachable. Comparing this to, uh, I guess, the tried and true Sierra Nevada pale ale, uh, I would say uh, that this is cleaner, almost. Okay. I want to say it's cleaner, at least on the finish. This is not as malty as a Sierra Nevada. Uh, it's definitely lighter, but what it lacks in the maltiness department uh, makes up for that in that cleanliness area. I think it depends on my mood. Yeah. So. You know, like if it was really hot outside or like if, if I was feeling like just a lighter beer, like a sessionable beer, yeah, I would go with this one. But uh, it's just, the Sierra Nevada Pale is just such a tried and true kind of de facto standard yeah. pale ale that I feel like I'd be doing it a disservice if I said that this was better. I think if I'm looking for a more true to its pale ale category, I'd go for this here in Nevada, for sure. Absolutely. But if I'm looking for like a hybrid between a pale ale, leaning more towards the IPA category, this one definitely fits it. Yeah, I would agree with that. Definitely a lot going on for a 5% beer. Yeah, you know, I'm continuously surprised by these breweries pumping out these beers with low ABVs um, that are good. This was canned by Steve <laughs> on 5-15-19. Steve. Cool. Well, I'd give this one a seal of approval. It's just something different, right? It's not gonna. It's not besting anything, in my opinion. It's just something you pick up on the shelf on a random day when you see it, and it's gonna be different. You know, different strokes for different folks, different pale ales for me, in, for different moods. Yeah, that's what I got. All right, well, that does it for us, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you like what you saw, please hit that subscribe button and the bell notification to get notified when new videos come out. And as always, stay crafty. Cheers. <laughs>